Inform. Investigate. Inspire. This is News 3 at 5. Good evening. Welcome to News 3 at 5. I'm Kurt Williams. And I'm Pari Cruz live in Chesapeake out at this Walmart that is reopening after nearly five months of being closed. This after a tragedy here where a store manager killed six employees before turning the gun on himself. Now we first want to begin with the six victims and those lives lost that day. I wanted to mention their names right now. They are 38 year old. Brian Pendleton, he was a custodian here for 10 years. 52-year-old Kelly Pyle, she was an overnight team associate. We have 43-year-old Lorenzo Gamble, who worked here for 15 years as a custodian. And we also have 70-year-old Randy Blevins. You see him right there on your screen. He worked here for nearly 30 years. 22-year-old Tynika Johnson was an overnight associate. And the youngest of these victims was 16-year-old Fernando Jesus Chavez Barron. He was working here during the Thanksgiving break to help out his family. Now, earlier today at the opening, there was a ribbon cutting. And before that, the remodeled store hundred attended an emotional ceremony right out front here at the store. One of the many speakers out here today was our Chesapeake Mayor Rick West. He said it was a proud moment to be here and he knows that this community can overcome anything. We know that a store, this store will forever be tied to the six individuals and their legacy. It's my hope that it will also serve as a tangible reminder that Chesapeake is built upon resiliency. Now, Mayor West addressed the crowd here, saying he had prepared remarks for the but was feeling a wide range of emotions. He said in all of his time being the mayor of Chesapeake, he's never been more proud to be a part of this community than today. He also got a tour of the newly remodeled store and said that even in the face of this tragedy, when he looked into the faces of the workers who greeted with smiles, he knew that things would be all right. There's still that raw emotion of, of sorrow for what happened, but there's a sense of inner strength in that smile too, that we're going to get through with through this. Now, Mayor West said that the entire country wrapped its arms around the Chesapeake community and that they will continue to show their love and support for one another. And again, you know, this community is still healing and they're still on this journey towards reaching full healing and opening up their hearts. And this beginning is just beginning with the reopening of the store. Their store manager that took me on a tour of the remodeled store tells us that they're not going to let this tragedy to find them. When you work in a Walmart store, it becomes your home and your family. Um, so it was really great experience that we were able to come back. Store manager Alicia Mixon spoke to us on a private tour of the newly remodeled Chesapeake Walmart after the tragic shooting took place here back in November. The situation was the most challenging, but I think it really showed me that people come first and the relationships and the bonds that you build with each and every person that you encounter really do make a difference. When customers first walk in, they'll be greeted by this beautiful new mural of a blue heron and the Jordan Bridge, which represent the city. And as I walked the aisles of the store, I noticed it underwent a complete transformation. This is the octagon. From having a new layout, interactive features, and signage to other upgrades. What has it been like for you to see all of these changes come to fruition from beginning to end? Um, it's actually been pretty amazing for me. Um, really, Walmart really allowed me to do the store the way the community needed it to be done. Um, and I was very, very happy to have a seat at the table for that. Um, so it's, I'm just excited now that I'm excited about it. I want to see how the customers react to it. The store has also built this memorial space featuring these six benches for each of the six lives lost that day. It's a little bit of a loss, right? So when you lose an associate, no matter the reason, it's a part of your family. She told us they were able to retain 60% of their associates. And those who have seen the memorial have been very moved by it. Our goal is that this area will allow associates, community, 
family members to be able to come and be able to reflect, to share stories, um, and to really make sure that we're honoring the memory of the souls that were lost. Alicia says she hopes it helps them on their journey towards healing. Imagining what happened here five months ago um, does still sometimes it's hard, right? But they aren't letting this tragedy define them. We're really grateful that um, we were able to do something in their memory. We really are. We wanted to make sure that it was special um, and that everyone was able to enjoy it. Now the memorial that you just saw in that video is open and ready for the community to come and see as of 10 o'clock this morning. However, when we took a look at the memorial, there were no names of those victims anywhere to be seen or even on the placard that's on the wall. And that's something that some of the victims families told me that they wish they could see. And when I spoke to Walmart corporate, they didn't mention any plans or future plans to add those names. Now you might remember that back in November when this incident happened, this happened in the break room. We're told that the break room has been completely remodeled and also made more comfortable for employees who were able to give their input, but we were not allowed to see that break room and Walmart also didn't allow us to know exactly which types of remodeling they did in there. Now we also did speak to exclusively to Mrs. Linda Gamble, the mother of Lorenzo Gamble, one of the victims in the tragic incident. Here's what she had to say. It been really hard because we was really, really close. You know, so he was in the lead, he was running. Now, Mrs. Gamble allowed us into her home and even showed us pictures of Lorenzo. She still had hanging up everywhere. Mrs. Gamble told me she hasn't been back to this Walmart and has no plans of ever going back to any of their locations. Most of the victim's family members and friends I spoke with told me they still weren't ready to chat with me or even ready for the store to reopen. I also showed Mrs. Gamble video we took of the memorial, but she told us she didn't like it. To me, it should have been something different, and then they're getting ready to open them right back up. It's just like a slap in the face. It's just like Walmart don't care. Because they should have really did something for the family. At today's reopening event, employees wore the names of all of the six victims on t-shirts that they had specifically made for this event. You see one of those t-shirts right there. Now, those that I was able to speak with off camera said that, you know, they're a family here and that they will continue to heal as one here at Walmart. And as you can imagine, some locals have varying opinions about this store and about its reopening. Our news reporter Angela Bohan has been out here with me much of the day and she spoke with customers to get their thoughts. She joins us live now. Let Angela, you and I were out at the candlelight vigil a couple months ago in the wake of this tragic shooting. What are you hearing from customers today about the reopening of the store? That's right, Pari. A much different feeling today, though. We are, you know, in those days and weeks afterwards here in the parking lot, people by coming by, giving their condolences, their grievances, but now a much different feeling the sun is shining and those we talked to who returned for the reopening say they were ready to take that next step I'm coming here forever and i mean it's sad for what happened but um something like this happened you just can't stop everything i mean what was it like to be in there it's it's nice it's nice to be back at home um it's real community based it's real very nice now that was Nichelle Buffalo from Buffalo Family and Friends Pantry. We ran into them stocking up for two food distribution events for local seniors this coming weekend. She told me this location is much more convenient for their nonprofit and she feels Walmart did a nice job with the renovation. Now some people are posting online saying they're not going to return and we did hear some of that yesterday nearby. One guy who did come today for the reopening said he had a bit of anxiety 
with the big crowds. Now, coming up in the next hour, we'll hear from another customer about her thoughts, and she shares with us how she had a friend who lost a loved one here that night in November. Pari, back to you. Angela, thank you so much for being out here and continuing to follow this story as we have been since the beginning. Now, Kurt, we're going to send it back to you in the studio, but make sure to come back out to us. We will have more details for you and more updates from out here in the Walmart. Pari and Angela, thank you so much for this team coverage. Coming up, we are continuing our coverage of the reopening of the Chesapeake Walmart. A look at how the victims are being remembered next. Plus, how the victims in another Hampton Roads tragedy are being honored in a special ceremony 34 years later. Now we are continuing our coverage out here from the Chesapeake Walmart nearly five months after a tragic shooting took the lives of six people. Now our news three anchor Jessica or Shea was out here earlier and shares how each of those victims is being remembered. 70 year old Randy Blevins worked at the Walmart on Sam Circle for 29 years. He was an overnight stock associate. The company says he never missed a day of work. He leaves behind three stepdaughters. Fernando Jesus Chavez Barone was a 16 year old 11th grade honor student who worked at the Walmart to help his family. 43 year old Lorenzo Gamble was a 15 year custodian whose greatest joys were football and spending time with his two sons. 22-year-old Tynika Johnson was an overnight associate who loved music, dancing, and dreamed of attending college soon. 38-year-old Brian Pendleton was a custodian for 10 years who always arrived early to his shifts and loved to joke with his fellow associates. And 52-year-old Kelly Pyle was an overnight team associate. She leaves behind two children, a granddaughter, and a fiancé. And this evening, we're continuing to remember the victims of the Walmart mass shooting as the store reopened today. Coming up on News 3 at 5.30, we are hearing from a psychologist on how to navigate a day like this. Other news now, the Norfolk City Auditor has released its report on the search for the next Norfolk Police Chief. And the report says that City Manager Chip Filer did not violate city code or the city's employment process when he made the decision to hire Hampton Police Chief Mark Talbot. Now, Talbot was not one of the finalists for the position and was actually on the committee to select the new chief. The auditor did suggest the city council could change the city code that any future hires would need to be approved by the city council. Today, veterans and military families paying tribute to the 47 sailors killed on the USS Iowa 34 years ago, a gun turret exploded on the Norfolk based battleship on April 19, 1989. It's remembered as one of the worst peacetime disasters ever for the Navy. A memorial ceremony was held at Naval Station Norfolk this afternoon, and one sailor on board that day spoke about the years of healing following the tragedy. When I started my, my journey on recovery, with mental health. This is where I got my first support, the first time I was told I should get some help. I knew there was something wrong with me, but I couldn't put my finger on it and I didn't feel like I deserved any help. But it was my family from the Iowa that told me different. He's now getting help from the organization, the National Alliance on Mental Illness, and it is free for all. All right, time now to check on our forecast chief meteorologist, Patrick Rocky, and stepping outside today, Patrick. I mean, I love yesterday. Today was great, and it gets even better, right? It gets even warmer <laughs> anyway. You know, today was one of those days, though. It was either cool for you or warm for you, depending on where you were standing, because we had temperatures only in the 60s close to the coast, but tomorrow some of us are going to get to the 90 degree mark. So this is a look at a look back at the record books. 90 degree days in Norfolk, our official reporting station. This is from the National Weather Service. The earliest 90 degree day we've had is March 23rd, 1907. So we've had 90 degree days in March. Our latest 90 
90 degree day was July 2nd, 1972. So it didn't get to 90 until July. The longest streak of 90 degree days in April was four days, April 23rd to the 26th, 1960. All four days we had high temperatures in the 90s and the hottest April day on record 97 degrees. That was back on April 26th, 1960. So we may or may not get to the 90 degree mark at our official reporting station at Norfolk International, but we do think some of us will touch the 90 degree mark tomorrow. Some of the areas that got to the 80 degree mark today are most likely suspects. We got to 81 in Wakefield, 80 in Franklin, 80 in Ahoski. Meanwhile, with a little breeze off of the water along the coast, it was cool. Just 64 high temperature today uh, at Oceana and Virginia Beach. Same story for Wallops Island, 65 in Manio. Most of us were right in between that. And for tomorrow, yeah, it's going to be a warm one. We're talking 90 in Chesapeake and Portsmouth, 91 tomorrow in Suffolk. We'll get darn close in Franklin as well. We're talking maybe the low to mid 80s for Norfolk and Virginia Beach. Then as we head to the peninsula, it's around 87 for Williamsburg and for Newport News for tomorrow. Cooler on the eastern shore, but warmer than it was today where we've been stuck in the 60s. On the Outer Banks, similar story. We'll climb into the upper 70s, but look at inland North Carolina. 90 in Hertford, pretty close in Moyock in Elizabeth City. 90 in Gatesville, 90 Windsor, pretty close in Ahoski as well. So tomorrow is going to be a warm one, but you see our temperature trend after that is down. We work our way down to around 80 on Saturday, upper 60s, low 70s on Sunday, mid 60s on Monday. So some below normal temperatures are on the way thanks to this cold front. That's also the cold front that's going to bring us some wet weather as we head into the weekend. So dry tomorrow, dry on Friday, virtually no chance for rain. 60% chance for showers mainly late in the day on Saturday and maybe a few thunderstorms in the mix as well. And then a 40% chance for some early showers on Sunday, but we do think most of the weekend is going to be dry. Any rain we do get will help with the pollen situation. You see pollen levels dropping on Sunday, but before then we're talking high to extreme levels of pollen. So for this evening, what you see is what you get. The clear skies temperatures dropping into the 60s, 50s when you wake up tomorrow morning, a few clouds dotting our skies, and that'll be the story in the afternoon. Most of us will make it in the mid to upper 80s. Some areas will likely touch the 90 degree mark and you can see that cooling trend as we head toward the weekend. That chance for some showers and storms late Saturday and into early on Sunday and then highs mainly in the 60s next week. Thank you, Patrick. Disposable diapers pile up in our landfills, but an old fashioned approach offers a green alternative. Coming up, the effort to make cloth diapers more convenient for parents. The Supreme Court has extended its deadline to decide whether to keep a commonly used abortion pill on the market. Justice Samuel Alito extended the deadline until just before midnight Friday, giving them more time to consider whether to uphold a ruling from a federal judge in Texas who revoked FDA approval for mifepristone. Now, Judge Matthew Kaczmarek, a Trump appointee, ruled the FDA improperly approved the drug 23 years ago. An appeals court later ruled the approval of mifepristone should stand. Now, both sides on the abortion debate are waiting to see what the Supreme Court will do. Critics say allowing the initial ruling to stand, banning its use, may open the courts up to all kinds of new challenges. Every parent knows that a new bundle of joy comes with other bundles too. Dirty diapers, and they end up headed to our landfills. Nina Lassen is helping families make a greener choice. She owns Diaper Kind, a New York-based service delivering a cloth alternative to front doorsteps. For about $40 a week, the company supplies 90 organic cotton diapers to customers. The company takes the dirty diapers to wash, pH test, and inspect for stains, and then returns them to be used again. We have continuing coverage of the reopening of the Chesapeake Walmart. Up next, News 3's Jessica Larche talking to a psychologist who specializes in PTSD. Why she says today's reopening can be triggering and when it's time to get help.